Hey everybody, I hope you all had a great weekend. Um, so for this Musical Monday, we are gonna be, it's gonna be pre-recorded obviously, um, but what I am doing is that I am going to pretty much just act like it's a regular like live video. So there's not gonna be much editing, there's not gonna be much special effects or anything cool like that. Just letting you know, so you know that that's what's happening. Um, so, um, if you haven't been on here before, this is Musical Mondays. We do this every Monday at one o'clock or around one o'clock. Um, and we go over a musical that has been pre-selected, um, and we look at the plot, the themes, um, and we actually, we also do some theater knowledge that maybe some kids don't know. These classes are tailored to kids between, uh, second grade and senior year of high school or even college kids, um, just depending on who wants to watch, but they are available to watch for anybody and are very educational. Just to let you know though, um, for these videos, especially for the older people and the, and the older kids, um, it does have to be like not dumbed down, but it does have to be, you know, from second grade level to senior year at high school level. Um, so I will be kind of dubbing down some details about some of these shows and things like that. Um, obviously, um, this is not a, a video about anything that is going on in the country right now. Uh, we're kind of in a weird spot, um, with where we are, and I wanted to, um, tell people that this is not going to become a place that will be, uh, cited. Um, this is not going to be a video that will talk about anything that's going on in the world right now. Um, and that's the reason why I'm making these, that I'm continuing to do them, even though I do have actually two other jobs right now, um, because I want the kids to have an escape um, from a lot of what's happening right now and to be able to go and talk about theater and talk about things that they can't go off and do because our country's still in somewhat of a shutdown. Um, and you know we're dealing with a lot of issues right now so i wanted to make this kind of a safe space for any kid any adult anybody who needs 15 to 20 minutes about musical theater about plays about anything for them to come and watch um, and have something to enjoy during the week um, that also brings up the the uh, theatrical creativity challenge that i put out there on um uh, i believe i put it on saturday um but send your creative videos um, your create, excuse me, your creativity challenge entries to K-R-A-U-S-C-H-L-O-E. It will also be on this post, but send it to that email, oh, at gmail.com, should probably put that, um, but send it to that email so that we can post them this week and we can post some really cool art or dance or song or anything that you send in to us, uh, on there for us to see. Um, it needs to be related to a theater show or anything theatrical, but other than that, there's really no limitations. Oh, I forgot macaroni on, on glued on a plate is also one. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Ooh, um, so today we're going to go over some theater knowledge. Uh, the theater knowledge today is about a certain person during a show. So, uh, the stage manager, everybody knows that there is a stage manager. There isn't a show if there isn't a stage manager. And what, what is a stage manager? Well, the stage manager is the person that runs the entire show. And by I mean, it, they run the entire show, they run the entire show. Um, they will either be calling cues. So like every single time that you see a light change or you hear a sound cue come on, that is the stage manager saying, that's your cue, go, 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 go. And they run four or five different people during the entire show. Um, and that is their job. They also, during rehearsal process, they have to write down Every single thing the director says for blocking wise and other notes, they also pretty much have to be the first ones at rehearsal and the last ones to leave to set everything up and get everything together. And sometimes they can even double as different crew members as well. They also can be backstage with uh, the, the moving crew as well. Um, if that is where they are needed for that certain production, it just kind of depends on what production you are uh, in. And are they really the most important person in the production? Yes, you cannot do a show without a stage manager. I will tell you from directing, um, I've, been a st I've been both a stage manager and I've been a uh, director. And when you direct a show, you, you cannot call your own cues. You cannot recall your own blocking sometimes because you write it down and then you are doing other stuff and dealing with other things. And we're like, what did we say we were gonna do here? And you're like, I have no idea. 
and I, like turn and I'm like uh and that's when you turn to your stage manager and you're like what are we gonna do here and they go oh yeah you you went stage left and you're like oh, thank goodness thank you so yes stage manager is the most important person in the theater during the show or before the show most important person so today's musical monday is a great musical it was the first musical i ever got to see on broadway um i will say the the plot that we're gonna about that we're about to go over is not explicit um but some of the language and the actions taken during the show um are kind of rated pg-13 for really really young kids um but what we go through today will not be inappropriate for them um i made sure to make to take out certain details and take out certain things um so this show is amazing it's great it was written by the music was written by the great sarah Borellis. um and um yeah so let's go over waitress so it starts by introducing us to jenna who is a young waitress at a kind of like a diner um but she um makes pies and that's like her release from the world and and all of that um uh, her friends don and becky uh, notice that she starts getting sick during the day. She's kind of not feeling well. She doesn't look like herself. And they're like, hey, we think you're pregnant. You need to take a pregnancy test. And so she goes and takes a pregnancy test and she finds out that she's pregnant. Um, the problem is, is that her husband is, uh, she has a rocky marriage with him and he is somewhat abusive. And when, while she's working at the diner, he takes half of her, um, he takes all of her money, basically, uh, from the tips that she makes at the diner. She longs to get out of this relationship, and she longs to get out of this tiny little town, but she doesn't know how, and she doesn't see a way to get out. So she decides the best thing to do is to not tell her husband about the pregnancy right now, because she's like, I, I just don't want to deal with that. So Jenna goes to see her doctor about her pregnancy, but then she finds out that her doctor retired. And so it's a new doctor, a nice young doctor who is about her age, who is married, say that. And they meet during the appointment, they compliment each other, and they seem to be very like friendly with each other. There's no like code to that at all. Like they're just really friendly and they seem to like each other, like just each other's company. Um, and so Jenna finds out that there is a large pie contest coming into town here soon and the winner gets a large cash prize and she sees that as a way to get out from her husband and out of this small town and so she decides to put her effort into uh, entering in the pie contest and winning it to run away from her husband and to raise their child and so um, Dawn, who is one of Jenna's friends that, um, that, uh, helped her discover that she was pregnant, um, is now going on a blind date and she's super nervous about all the things that could go wrong. And she's like, oh my gosh, like, what if he does this? Or what if he does this? Or what if he, and all these things. And she's kind of going crazy, um, about it. And they have to kind of calm her, Jen, Jenna and Becky have to calm her down and be like, you need to calm, calm down. It'll be okay. Just go meet the guy. He might be nice. He turns out so uh jenna is headed home now and she runs into the new doctor at the bus stop and he's complimenting her pies because she gave him a pie and uh he's like yeah i knew this this lady at a shop that i used to work at that i used to frequent quite a lot is actually what he said um but and he's like yeah your pies are so much like better and they're great and you put so much passion into them and all this stuff um and so it was a great connection for them to see each other again, all this stuff. Um, Jenna gets home and finds out that her husband has lost his job and he really doesn't care. He's like, whatever. And he gets angry with her about it and he's about to get like abusively physical with her and she confesses that she's pregnant so that he won't hurt her. Um, and when he finds this out, he makes her promise that she will not love the baby more than him. Now, obviously, parents, you know, that that's never going to happen. That I Like, I'm not a parent, but I know when I have a child, I will love them more than anything in this world. Yes, I will love my husband. Yes, absolutely. But my child, oh. So, Jenna tells Dawn and Becky um, her plan to win the pie contest and to get away from her husband and to raise the baby on her own. And so Jenna starts giving uh, her husband only half of what she's making, and then she hides the other half in different places in the house um, so that she can use it to enter the contest. 
Um, so then Jenna makes an appointment with her new doctor to kind of get some things looked at and they kiss and they're both married, but they seem just so infatuated with each other and they really like each other and they know it's a bad idea. That's a song in there too. They know it's a bad idea, but they're like, we're going to keep doing it because we, we like each other. So Jenna comes back to the cafe, the diner, excuse me, not the cafe, the diner to realize that Becky is cheating on her husband uh, with the uh, diner uh, general manager, Sasha Cook, who's there. And so Becky kind of talks about how she's like, don't, you know, don't, she says, don't throw rocks at me, but you know, don't judge me for my decisions. You know, you're making the same ones. Like you can't look at me negatively if you're doing the same, if you're making the same mistakes I am. And so now, um, Jenna and the doctor are together. Like they're not, they're, they're together in the sense that they are having an affair with each other. Um, and Becky and the pie shop owner, excuse me, the, the diner owner, not owner, gosh darn it, the diner, uh, general manager slash cook are together, and then Don and her blind date, Ogie, that's his name, Ogie, is, are together, so there's a whole song about them all three being together, and so several months pass, and Don and Ogie get married, he tells her that he loves her like a table, and he tells all the reasons why, um, and then Jenna's husband drags um, her home after the wedding, because he found half of the money that she wasn't giving him and wanted to know why and he was getting really angry and she said oh I wanted to use it for the baby's room and so he's like oh we'll go buy a crib all right and obviously that was a lie because she wanted to use the money to um enter into the pie contest um but you know obviously that did not happen um and so she tells him that um yeah, so she tells him, sorry, I got lost in my notes. So um, Jenna, he leaves. He takes the money with him. He leaves. Jenna um, breaks down and sings about her life and how it's out of control. And she never imagined any of this would happen and how nothing is really going her way. And she just doesn't know how to be happy. And she doesn't know who the person she used to be was um, or is. And so Jenna then starts going into labor. So she's about to give birth to the baby. And um, Jenna sees the owner of the diner. Now, I didn't explain him because he only has, he comes in every day. He's kind of like, not rude, but just an old guy sitting there like, I want my coffee and eggs and toast and things like that. Um, but he, and he talked to her at Dawn's wedding as well. But he sees her and he knows that he is probably about to die. And so he gives her an envelope while she's on her way back to labor and for her to open after her baby's born. Jenna gives birth to her daughter, Lulu. What a cute name. Um, and Jenna's husband tries to remind her right after she gave birth that uh, not to love the baby more than him. And she looks at him and asks him for a divorce. Um, and so he's like, what? No, like all this stuff. And she threatens him. Uh, she threatened him if he came near her or her baby ever. And then he leaves. Um, Jenna's doctor comes back a little while after Lulu is born and tries to give her a kiss. Jenna declines it and says she is not happy just being happy enough. But that was kind of the theme of this whole show was that she mm -hmm. was just happy enough and she was not fully happy with uh, her, her affair and her life with him. Um, and she wants to break off the affair. Jenna realizes how happy she is now that she's a mother and that she has something to care for and something that she will love in return for its love. And so Jenna opens the letter from uh, the owner who left, uh, the owner left her the letter and realizes that he left her the diner and asks her to name a pie after him. And so after a few, a few years later, the diner is renamed Lulu's Pie Shop and Jenna is happy and content on how her life has turned out, and she indeed, indeed did name a pie after the owner. Um, this show is really emotional. It's a very good show for mothers and daughters to go see. Um, not saying that if a father or a grandfather went, um, I went with my grandparents, and my papa was very emotional about the show because of just 
it's just a very emotional story and it's a very relatable story. I think even if you haven't been in the circumstance of, of maybe an abusive relationship or, you know, having an affair or anything like that, it's just the, the sense of relationships and the issues in relationships, even the healthiest relationships are presented in this show. Uh, so the themes, the first theme uh, that is presented to me is, is loving yourself. Um, you need to fully love yourself before you can give love to other people. And I think to fully commit love to, to another person. Uh, I think that's one of Jenna's biggest issues is that she doesn't fully see herself because she has somebody there constantly dragging her down. Um, and I think that if she were to say, oh no, I'm good how I am and what I do is, is good, then like, you know, that's, that's how she needs to see it. And she would love herself more. And I think she would have gotten out of the relationship with her husband sooner. Um, the second theme is friendship is more powerful than maybe even true love sometimes. Uh, the friendship that um, Jenna, Dawn, and Becky have is like just a beautiful friendship. They all make other than other than Dawn, you know, Becky and Jenna both make the same mistake around the same time. Um, but they both like recognize the mistake and they both understand, you know, that they're both in two different points in their lives, but they still support each other, even though they critiqued each other, if that makes sense. Um, don't just be happy enough. Um, that's a really big theme because being content sometimes is not the best practice. Um, and sometimes you need to be as happy as you can be. And sometimes you have to do that maybe alone. Maybe you don't do it with another person. You just need to make sure that you're as happy as you can be and you make choices and make decisions to make you as happy as you can be fully and not just saying, I'm just going to be happy enough for right now. Um, the last theme is a little bit, it's a little bit of an older theme for like older kids, uh, but abusive relationships. This is a really kind of hard subject to talk about, but it's okay to get out of an abusive relationship. I know it's really difficult. I don't know from experience. I have never been in a in an abusive relationship, both physical or verbal. Um, but I do know that I've had several friends who have been in them, and um, it's okay to leave them. If that is what's going to make you happy, then leave them. I'm not giving you relationship advice on here. But what I'm saying is if it's abusive, then it's not, I don't feel like it's love. I feel like if somebody's going to love you, they're going to care about you. They're going to be loyal to you. They're going to want to help you in every aspect of their, of your life that they're going to want to support you. And I feel like abuse, abusive relationships, they are not supporting you. They are kind of almost pulling you down. Now, if you are in an abusive relationship right now, please, and, and you want help, please call professionals to help. Um, I am obviously not a professional in that, but I just want to make sure everybody gets what they need if that is the situation that you were in. Once again, it's a very hard topic to talk about. Um, it's something that a lot of theaters and things talk about through shows and different aspects and things like that, but just make sure that you know there are people here for you. There are people around that will help you if you do need help, and don't ever think that asking for help is bad because it's not because we've all been through different situations. It may not be the same as yours, but we've all been through different situations and we all want to help each other. Um, okay. So that was the last theme. Um, so obviously for questions or comments, uh, leave them below. Obviously I can't answer your comments live because it's pre-recorded, but that's okay. If you have questions about this show, if you have questions about any of the shows that we've covered, let me know in the comments. Um, if you have a show, so musical or a play that you want looked at, um, please put those in the comments as well. I will be going over Hamilton when it comes out on Disney Plus. I just thought it'd be a good way for um, everybody to see Hamilton, to have a chance to actually see it, not on stage in person, obviously, but like, you know, computer, TV, whatever, so that they can physically see it before we talk about it. Um, I think that's one of the, you know, the biggest things about theater is being able to see it before you examine it. And I think that that will make a good opportunity for us to do that. Um, please email me your theater, theater, 
cannot talk today. Your theatrical creativity challenge entries at k-r-a-u-s-c-h-l-o-e at gmail.com. I'd love to see these. Send me it with your title, your name, and that is for the creativity challenge. Let's throw some stuff out there, people. It'd be so much fun. I'm so excited to see what you send me. So, this play Thursday, once again, will be pre-recorded. I will actually be playing in a golf tournament, hopefully, um, this Thursday. Uh, so, obviously, I can't teach a class while I'm in the middle of playing a golf tournament, but we're going to pre-record. We're going to have a guest uh, star, guest star, guest on the show today. Oh, my gosh, I can't talk. We're going to have a guest on Thursday. We're going to have John Michael Thompson, who went to Freed Hardman. He's a great student. He's a great actor. And he's about to make his directorial debut this year. Um, and we are so excited to talk to him about a show that is a historical show, um, has a lot of meaning, and uh, is very, um, it's a very, uh, like, it just has a lot of meaning, especially in the time that we're in right now. So, clues for play thursday and with an e 1940s it's a true story it's like a journal okay if you guys have any questions comments concerns anything please message me on facebook um send me a comment and put a comment in the comment section below Try to contact me any way that you can, um, and I hope to see you on Thursday. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Keep creating.